What brings us here today, and, and I think about challenges that people like John Adams and our forefathers had, and I mean, they were creating a whole new country. And they weren't just creating a whole new country, but they were actually going against the country that they were, that they were a part of. Um, and so the work that, and the challenges that we have are not challenges that, that are insurmountable. And I think about the civil rights movement of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and even some of the civil rights movements that we're having today in those discussions. They're not easy discussions to have, but they're discussions that need to happen. And they're essential if we're going to bring about a better life and a higher quality of life for everyone, not just those who have the means, but everyone in our country, um, and especially in our community of Santa Fe. So we're here today to celebrate the past achievements that we've had, but we're also here today to, today to kick off um, some of the th challenges and um, efforts that we're going to make for the next year. And we'll be talking about that as the afternoon goes. So the first quality of life symposium, we had over 175 people that attended. So um, that was a huge and great success. Um, it's something that kind of created a buzz around town, and little by little it's grown, and it's be 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 begin to evolve and um, turn into something that is really going to be beneficial for the entire city of Santa Fe, not just the south side or the area that we focus on, but for the entire city of Santa Fe, because what is good for them is good for the entire city. Um, the, some of the results, and we'll go over a lot of this in detail, but some of the results are opening the Southside Library on Sundays, something as simple as that. Making sure that people have access to the library on Sundays also means that they have access to education, access to health care, access to resources that aren't available in other parts of our community or in other um, locations. Um, we had a whole series of listening sessions, and we'll get to that as well in some of the details and what happened there, but essentially, we had an average of about 35 people that went to each listening session. Sometimes there was only five people, sometimes there was 30 people. It just kind of depended. But on average, it was about 35 people who attended our listening sessions. Um, and so what is the quality of life initiative? It's not just an, in, an initiative or a program. It's really capturing the spirit of people. It's capturing the spirit of people for the people and by the people. It's, it's making sure that people begin to drive and become engaged and involved in their community and so that they can educate leaders like myself and others about what it is that they need in order to improve their quality of life. And so um, today... And I think that the Quality of Life Initiative has been a very positive uh, force in moving this community in the continual direction of prosperity and success through community engagement and through civic engagement at the at the local level and each time i come back to santa fe i get a glimpse at the positive things that are happening as a result uh, earlier this year i got a chance to uh, to meet with some of the leaders of this initiative at the la familia medical center where i heard about the reach program and what it was doing to help get service providers and community leaders to focus on the specific challenges in this community. Um, I joined members of the Quality of Life Initiative for the grand opening of that uh, community-based VA clinic. And I can tell you that there's not uh, a day that I've been U.S. Senator where I did something more, uh, where I was more proud than that, to see this place made real that is giving the kind of services that our veterans earned uh, access to that in their own community, uh, having seen what they had to struggle through to get adequate access at the former clinic. It was really a good day. And I'm really impressed with the, the work that's being done around food access. I'm very excited about the weekly Southside Farmers Market. And I am personally, as somebody who has you know, lived through the health care wars now, um, I am so excited about efforts to provide families with the choices that they want so that they can improve uh, the health of our families and at the same time bring neighborhoods together and support local growers and support our agricultural traditions. Um, 
you know, Andrew mentioned the Southside Branch Library being open from 1 to 5 on Sundays. Uh, I can tell you, you know, when I was growing up, um, they didn't call us latchkey kids. We just were. You know, our parents worked, and they worked overtime, and they worked late. And I couldn't tally the hours that I spent after school in the library, during the summer, in the library, in the weekends when it was open in the library. And it's such an important part and opportunity for our kids to be able to access that on the weekends. I don't think we can underestimate how important it is. So there been One of the other things I was very invested in this year that didn't get a lot of um, press coverage probably because we were successful and because we built such a bipartisan coalition was the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. You know, something that was deeply bipartisan. It was signed by the president in July, and it really helped bring many of the federal workforce development programs uh, from the past into the future, ensuring that our students are really receiving a world-class affordable education that, at, at every age. Um, it, it's no secret, too, that I think it's time to get very serious about using our state's permanent fund to invest in our kids, doing it in a sustainable way, <laughs> but having been exposed to people all across this country who want who are seeking places to grow their businesses and to uh, invest in manufacturing and to do new things. The rest of the country, the rest of the world, is not going to invest in us until we're investing in ourselves. And no one deserves that more than our own kids, and particularly in early childhood education.